Hey all, Trevor here with Red Leaf, and today is episode four of our protocol grow. We're going to be going over a little bit of topping, a little bit of training, and some techniques that you can use to help increase your overall yield and maximize growth on your plants. I'm really looking forward to covering all of those techniques and actually giving you guys a little bit of uh, pre and post outcomes with it with the girls that we have. But first, we're going to give you a little bit of a flyby in our tents before we dive into this information. So intro is going to slide in. We'll give you a little bit of a look at the outdoor and the indoor girls before we start um, really diving in to the meat and potatoes of this video. So stay tuned, you guys. We'll be back in a couple of minutes with the good information. But for now, let's give you a little up grow update. Sit down. Sit down. Hey guys, and welcome back. We've got a time lapse here of our auto flowers in the protocol protocol tent. They've had a really good stretch and have packed on actually quite a bit of green since the uh, last grow update this past Wednesday. They're all looking really good. The uh, four Bubba Kush 2.5s that we have are uh, looking great as well, and. All of the girls are looking amazing in the photo tent. But we'll leave you guys with a little bit of music and uh, just to check out the uh, photos going on. These two girls out here are uh, for a couple of friends of mine. We'll be getting rid of those this coming week. But for now, let you guys take a look at this before we dive into some more information at the uh, other side of this video. Welcome back, you guys. And as you can see, the indoor plants are looking incredible. We're going to give you a little bit of a flyby of our five outdoor girls before we go into that information. So just a little bit longer, and we have the chunk of the video coming for you. And we've got our five outdoor girls right here, you guys. The three Baker Street are the first ones we're taking a look at. They've actually packed on quite a bit more uh, overall weight and just uh, leaf size than I was originally expecting. Like these outdoor girls are looking incredible. The two over here we have are the Moby Dick and you can see the difference between them. The one multi-headed top and then the single stemmed base there they're all looking incredible and uh, you guys will be seeing them again in a little bit welcome back you guys and as you can see all of our girls are looking incredible but now what you guys are here for for the more informative and in uh, instructional side of the video we are uh, going to be covering some training techniques and tools that you can utilize to help increase the overall yield and production of your uh, indoor cannabis grow and you can also utilize these outdoors but a lot of these um, techniques and tricks almost are going to be really to help maximize the indoor growing technique because its focus is going to be on maximizing the top cola that you can have because of the low to lack thereof of lateral lighting coming from a tent because you've got your light up top 
beaming right down onto your plants underneath. There's not a whole bunch of lateral lighting to there to uh, support the lower or um, smaller branch growth and flower side. Where the outdoors you have the sun that rotates on 180 degree cycle, so you end up having light that is one, a lot more intense, and two, moving to have a much richer and more um, effective light penetration and overall light coverage on the plants. Because what we're trying to do with our lights and our tents is simulating the experience that the sunlight produces because all in all that is the number one provider for our, uh, our plants, right? Natural light works the best. Our plants love it the most. But let's go ahead, get into this information you guys and uh, really see, uh, see the comparison of some of the techniques that I've utilized so far within my grow. And uh, if you guys have been paying attention, you might have even picked up on some of them with uh, the way that I recorded this video. But I've got the information written up here, so if you guys see me looking down, it's just because I've got my laptop here with the almost um, scripted information available for me just so that I don't uh, end up uh, misinforming or giving you guys any poor information. This will be primarily from the Sensi Seed website and their um, six possible cannabis training techniques article. I'll make sure to link that down below. Give them credit for the information because it definitely helps um, narrow, narrow down and make what I'm saying a lot more accurate and um, just finer tuned so that it gets the point across a lot clearer. So the term plant training means physically manipulating your plant so that it grows more bud sites and has greater light penetration, just like we were talking before. Cannabis tends to grow in a Christmas tree style of uh, grow, like it just tends to grow in a Christmas tree shape. So you get that cone shape and that's because you have the lateral lighting on the side and the circular up top. You get that even distribution of bud sites all the way up. Now, when you're growing with a singular light, that is beaming from top to bottom. You don't get the same penetration and intensity as the moving sunlight. So when you're growing outdoors, your lower bud sites are still going to have um, lesser size, quality, just quantity, everything in comparison to the top bud sites, primarily because the top bud sites do require and acquire more of the sunlight to uh, get those nice big juicy colas for us to uh, be able to smoke. The indoor grows are just more pronounced because the sun doesn't move in those tents. The light hangs still. The main idea of training is to create several top colas, increasing the larger colas that the plants produce, and then increasing your overall yield and maximizing your indoor growing space. Now. Topping or FIM, which is also known as fuck I missed. <laughs> we'll cover over exactly what all of that means and uh, then we'll give you guys a little bit of an example on this. So topping is gonna be actually cutting or breaking off the top of the growing shoot of the stem. Now, there are a couple of plants within our grove that we have done this. The White Widow Outdoors and our Triple Scoop Indoors are the best examples of this. And I will show you right down to where we topped and as well as the uh, multiple heads, the top colas that have been produced because of that. And it's a very useful technique. I've used it quite a bit actually through these last few grows and it's helped really cre increase the overall top cola yield I've had. I don't know what it would be in comparison to if I hadn't, but from uh, what I've been reading, I'm expecting it's been a massive improvement. Now. Once the stems have grown strong and healthy, you can actually do this a second and possibly even a third time. So if you do it the once, you end up creating two main colas. If you do it the second time, you'll end up creating four. And then if you do it the one more time, you'll end up creating eight because you get two from each, which is a really nice overall build and cola increase for that plant production. Now, FIM or fuck I missed was allegedly discovered by a gardener seeking to top his plants and missed. So all it is is you end up leaving a little bit of uh, the uh, bud site 
still there, but it still creates the uh, same production and focus of the topping technique. It just does it in a little bit of a different fashion, you guys. And having not done the the FIM at all, I don't really know what the uh, the difference would be, but I'm curious to see what it would be. And uh, we might have to try that out on some of our Bubba Kush 2.5s that we have because the auto flowers, they start to produce actual flowers, so we're a little bit late to actually start doing topping or the FIM because we'll just start losing bud sites. Now, we're gonna go ahead, give you guys a little clip of our White Widow and Triple Scoop with those before we talk about super cropping. So we'll see you guys in just a second. As you guys can see here, this triple scoop has a nice long single stem. And then we'll be moving over and taking a look at the one that uh, is a little bit shorter in height, but we have a few colas that are a little bit at the same level. And as you can see, I'm pointing right there to where we topped this plant off before we moved it over into our flower side. So we have the two main colas on that one versus the single there. Now, when we transition to the outdoor girls, as I was saying, we have the multi-topped one on the right and then our single stemmed white widow here. I will take you down. You can see it's really just a long, single, thick stem all the way to the base. And then in comparison, we have our other one that's just on the other side where we've got four main colas as well as a bunch of lateral branching that comes up and is almost at the equal height to where we have what looks like eight main colas and as you can see we're bringing it down to where we topped that white widow right there you can see the two main colas stretch out but with the lateral branching you see there's almost eight top spots for a really heavy and dense bud to be produced there. I'm looking forward to seeing how these White Widows are going to turn out and uh, we'll be uh, back with some more flower and uh, growth video in a second you guys. Super cropping is also known as high stress training. So I currently have one plant that uh, has experienced a lot of the super cropping. There was quite a few of our high seas that I did a lot of super cropping on and they um, are really the best example and I'll have to make sure to uh, try and find the best video where I have a bent right over and we'll put that up in the corner to go and check that out. That'd be a grow update for you guys and you'll see them. They're bent right over, big ass on it. We have the zombie cushion in our tent that I'll give you guys a little clip and look see at. Again with that detail of that super cropping onto it and you can actually see the really big bulbous um, knots that are on those stems. So let's cover the information here and then clip over to the video. Super cropping is similar to topping as it can divert the energy to the secondary stems. This allows the number of main colas to increase by focusing the energy to the secondary branches. You trick the plant into thinking that it's lost its main stem by actually bending it over and it almost well, you do end up breaking the membrane of the stem slightly. However, that main stem will recover and you'll end up getting a really big knot in there. And it'll overall increase the nutritional rate that's being sent to that top cola because that, that big knot there creates more roots and it can send more nutrition from that main stem out to where you super cropped. Now you can keep the, uh, the, plant producing and focusing maximum energy on the secondary plants while still receiving the nutrition to that main cola. So you're just creating a bunch of top sites at an equal and uh, overall balanced canopy growth. And that'll uh, actually help increase overall plant production because an even canopy growth will help level out the cola growth within each of the bud sites in there. So you'll have nice big bud sites on each of the uh, top even level canopy growth. Now, we're gonna go ahead and give you guys a look at our zombie 
Kush because that's a perfect example of an even canopy. You'll see it's a little bit dipped, but all of the top bud sites have an even amount of light penetrating through too, and uh, it's going to really be an, ex an exciting plant to uh, see grow because it was quite a bit of fun um, watching the production and the um, overall growth on those lateral branches off that main stem after we bent it down because it was really really interesting to see how everything worked out to um, produce a very very colorful and vibrant plant plant not plant plant second we're going to start talking about low stress training Hey guys, we're taking a look at the zombie kush here and as you can see this one's been bent right over for that super cropping and it's got the two knots in there from where we had a little bit more and we end up following the stem right up to that main cola which is actually going to be lower than a lot of the other branching that go along right that main stem that we have uh, pulled down and trained with some low stress training you guys. Welcome back you guys and uh, honestly coming back from that zombie kush if you saw any of those green ties that we have attached to the branches of our plants that's going to be an example of our low stress training. We've got almost all of our plants in the uh, I believe actually all of our plants in the photo um, flower tent will be uh, low stress trained. We're going to start doing some low stress training on our autos you guys will see that next week in uh, the grow update or a protocol grow. I believe we've got one of the two going up next week for you guys to enjoy. If not, it'll be in the next protocol grow update. You'll see how the actual plants can um, rejuvenate from having that low stress training attached and even maybe a little bit of some of that higher stress training. I'll have to take a look and see how far into it they are. But definitely you guys, if you want to learn more about the high stress training, I will attach another clip here. This is a uh, cannabis chiropractic, chiropractor video, I believe is what it's called. It's where I learned a lot of my um, techniques that I utilize in the super cropping and just um, increasing nutritional pathways through the plant. Definitely go check that out. That'll be linked up in the corner and uh, I'll make sure to throw that down in the description below as well. But for now, let's go over to the low stress training. This is going to be the least invasive and lowest stress plant um, training technique that you can utilize. What you're going to end up doing in comparison to the topping of the super cropping is just creating as much plant exposure to light as possible. And you guys will see that in the clips. We have those little green wires, they're soft wires or plant, they're literally plant training wires meant for what we're doing. You can also do this with um, yo-yos, which is a retractable device with a soft cord or nylon on it. A nylon cord will work as well. Just anything to help hold those plant stems down without actually um, injuring the plant itself. Now, you can uh, also utilize low stress training to force the main stem of the plant down to help balance out the canopy growth. And you can keep that all the way through the entirety of the plant's growth or you can actually uh, level it out to when the canopy gets to the right height for you and then you can have everything growing in uniform or unison. Um, it really does work well when you use it in correlation with the other techniques and you guys will see. I use low stress training on almost all of my plants and then I use topping or super cropping on, uh, on top of the low stress training because I really want to maximize the overall yield and grow space that I have going on in my tents. And we're uh, starting to get really good production yields off of these plants. So I'm expecting that uh, we're going to continue to uh, improve our technique and growing style uh, to continue to increase the yield and the overall quality. But we're going to go ahead and give you guys some focused low stress training clips. Really let you see how I have them tied down. With the fabric pots that I have, I just poke a hole right into them and tie it right in that way. But everyone has a different technique. Let me know what your guys' is down below in the comment if you do utilize low stress training. If not, here's an idea on how you can utilize it in your garden. 
Here we have our jungle juice with quite a bit of that low stress training all the way wrapped around these low branches that have these uh, tips or ends of these branches out and producing these nice big almost uh, equivalent to our top cola size buds and then over here we're giving you guys a little bit more of a look at the triple scoop this is the one that isn't going to be lollipopped but is going to have quite a bit of the low stress training on it before we take a look at the one that does have a little bit more of the kind of lollipopping and low stress training on it as well but and we've got the zombie kush here this one has a little bit of low stress training they're all really getting a huge benefit from this additional exposure to the light from being pulled out from the main stem and having that uh, uncovered light welcome back you guys now the final truly growing technique versus a growing style that you guys can utilize is going to be um, removing your lower branches or actually lollipopping your plant now our triple scoop plant we do have the one in there that we ended up doing almost a lollipopping grade um, removal on there it's a really really great technique to help um, allow the plant to focus its final weeks on producing flower because in comparison to the other three techniques this one's going to be done in the flower stage of the grow so with the removing of the lower branches and the lollipopping we will be doing this with our auto flowers i really like to do this with our auto flowers because it helps have that main focus on the top colas and i would rather have a bunch of top colas big juicy buds than the little popcorn nugs on our auto flowers especially with how limited they are for time in the tent because their time based grows however what you're going to do is you're going to remove the lower branches and the leaves from the plants and the difference between the lollipopping grade is lollipopping you're going to do it about two weeks into flower and you're going to go from the midway point of the plant all the way down to the soil base removing the lower branch you're going to go into the more mid to late period of the flower cycle and you're just going to go and kind of clean out the uh the larf so the low low area flower the ones that are just kind of nutrient leeches that prevent all of the best nutrient to go to the flowers up top and the colas up top to produce those big juicy buds now you can um increase the overall size and the weight just by doing this you guys and it's a great technique i found in comparison huge growth huge benefit from removing those lower branches and lollipopping my plants definitely going to be doing more of that lollipopping style technique with our auto flowers and more of the removing of the lower branches i might lollipop some of the plants on the uh, photo side but it really tends to depend on the genetics but we're gonna go ahead give you guys a comparison of our two triple scoops one where it's just had a little bit of lower branch removal and the other one where it's been fully lollipopped and uh, you can tell the difference and like I was saying in that last little clip of uh, the garden we will uh, be taking a look at first the triple scoop here that has our low stress training stretched out on all of these lower branching as well as a little bit of some lower branch cleaning but it is nothing in comparison to the triple scoop that we have over here within combination of the low stress training and the lollipopping that we've done we'll come down take a look at this main stem and you guys will see as we go down you just extreme loss of leaves bud sites anything along there right up to the top third or top half of the branch depending on where in the growth it is so that's going to be the difference between this one having lower branch removal and almost more of a lollipopping style of that uh, technique but now we're again we're pointing out our two colors versus a one with the benefit of our topping works in combination with all of the other techniques we're going to talk about sea of green and screen of green before we wrap this video up i hope you guys enjoyed the trips through the tent but this will be the last one you'll see today welcome back you guys now sea of green and uh, screen of green these two techniques are ones that i 
personally have not utilized yet, but they are ones that I'm interested in uh, in putting into effect and seeing the comparison of the two. And it may be one that we look at doing a protocol grow. However, to do the sea of green and screen of green techniques the way that I'd want to, we would need at least two more tents to make it happen because I'd want to rock a full 4x4 for a sea of green and a full 4x4 for a screen of green technique. And then we can keep them completely into their own tents and uh, do it that way. But that's, uh, that's going to be one that's a little bit down the line unless somebody wants to help hook up the channel with a couple of tents so that we can utilize that. But for now, let's go ahead and get this going. The sea of green technique is um, a, honestly one of the best techniques for small areas, like small grow area, um, photo based growers to maximize their yield and their grow time because with the sea of green technique, you're gonna decrease the amount of time that the cannabis spends in the veg and the flower periods. And you're going to do that by forcing the plants into the flower stage a little bit earlier than they typically are uh, are put into the flower stage you create a canopy of buds at, by do, doing this and that actually allows the direct exposure of the light like with any of our te other techniques to increase the bud size the yield the quality everything along those lines due to the decreased time in the veg period you can also expect an earlier harvest so this is one of those options where you might be able to uh, have 12 week rotations on some of your photo periods if they're fast flowers or 16 week rotations versus the six month rotation if you can cut two months off of your grow cycle that's a pretty good rotation actually and getting a whole extra grow in the year can't complain about that at all especially if uh, you're growing top quality buds now not a technique that I've utilized when I want to and when I'm interested in growing it uh, I think it would have to be a, a strain that I'd be really really unique um, you like uniquely interested in trying a bunch of different phenos of that might be where um, that sea of green technique would work well for me because I don't know if I would have the interest in that many plants of the same um, strain I like to uh, mix and match personally. Now, screen of green. This is going to be using the same principles as the sea of green. The only difference is you're going to be utilizing a netted screen to create that uniform canopy. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Now, this canopy can this canopy this canopy net. Let's finish that. That say this canopy net can be utilized um, and made up of chicken wire rope or even a simple nylon netting most of you guys can find just a simple nylon netting on amazon or at your local grow store and that's what it seems that most people utilize the chicken wire would be an interesting one because of the um there is a product out there i can't remember exactly what the uh, brand is called but they produce a screen that's made metal chicken wire that you can actually put the vibrations on and put music through so it helps increase the plant's growth now that is something I would be very interested in trying or even potentially producing, like making my own out of just some chicken wire and uh, making a little uh, redneck cannabis music garage thing. Yeah, definitely interested in trying that. And uh, it'd be interested to see, again, another idea for protocol grow, music versus non-music. I'd be interested to see how that would ha have a effect. Now. The use of the net is going to allow for a uniform height growth, cola lead growth, wider canopy growth, as well as an increased yield. Just like the majority of our other techniques, you guys are all kind of aiming at the same thing. Increasing your canopy, increasing your cola size, and leading with a cola based grow. Now, the screen of green is almost a combination of low stress training and the screen of, and the sea of green technique, although the main objective is to create as many colas as possible and you do end up manipulating some branches but it's not the main focus of the uh the technique is meant to just produce as many colas and cola top rich sites as possible now after putting the screen on the branches you can tie them to allow the production of more bud sites and branch stretching as well so you can actually 
um, utilize that cage as almost a support structure for really heavy and uh, dense bud production. But with that, you guys, that's all the information we have. We took you through the tent. We took you through the information. I had a good time today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. She was a long one. We'll be back tomorrow with a little bit of a shorter one with our sour OG one hitter weed review from the folks over at Violet Tourist bringing in that week of appreciation for the folks over there. I'm really excited to see how the sour OG cheese smokes before the lilac diesel on Friday. And then Wednesday, we've got our green organic Dutchman sugar bush garage sesh that we're going to be hopping on live so definitely come and check that out you guys but before that tuesday me and calton are going live on warzone we've got a hell of a lot of content coming for you guys a diesel honeycomb crumble review coming from uh, spinach like unbelievable endless content check it out every day of the week but for now let's wrap this one up and card's gonna slide in to uh, be notified whenever these videos go live you hover over that logo click the bell notification after you subscribe so that you get that invitation to come and join up on the party to come and join up on the uh the grow update to uh come and join up on our one hitter read reviews we've got a lot of good content you guys and clicking that bell is worthwhile down below we've got one video that's most recommended for you and another that is the most recently uploaded please click on either of those and anything else i have to offer on red leaf for now cheers and i will see you guys tomorrow with some of that uh, cheesy, sour OG strain from the folks at Violet Tears. Cheers.